A public backlash appears to be emerging in Britain about the way the royal family is handling the breakup of the marriage of the Prince of Wales, the heir to the throne. There's serious scepticism about the possibility of eventually having an estranged king and queen living in separate courts. But the acceptance of such a bizarre situation is considered vital if the monarchy is to weather its worst storm since King Edward VIII abdicated in 1936 to marry an American divorcee. Friends of Prince Charles and Princess Diana are dividing into rival camps along with their courtiers and advisers. ITN's Caroline Kerr looks at how their separate courts will operate. For some time now, the Princess of Wales has been clearly trying to establish her own court. Her trip to Paris last month, which included a 40-minute meeting with President Mitterrand, proved just how well she can operate without Prince Charles. Now, some commentators are worried she may be attempting to openly compete with him. The Princess is a very competitive animal. She always has been. Now she has her own quite separate court, a court over which she is completely in charge. There is a big danger that she could attempt to eclipse her husband. Prince Charles has been upstaged in the past. Last year he gave a keynote speech complaining about standards of education. It is almost incredible that in Shakespeare's land, one child in seven leaves primary school functionally illiterate. She spoke the same day about AIDS and stole the show. HIV does not make people dangerous to know. So you can shake their hands and give them a hug. Heaven knows they need it. If clashes occurred when they had regular planning meetings, they could become much worse now. The daily running of the royal household is all organized, of course, at Buckingham Palace, where the Queen has a full complement of staff. But just a short distance away at St. James's Palace, the Prince and Princess of Wales will operate separate offices. The Prince's key people will be Richard Aylard, his private secretary, and his detective, Colin Trimming, who's now a close personal friend. Advising the Princess at her court will be Patrick Jeffson, her former equerry, and Ken Worf, her trusted bodyguard. Dickie Arbiter, once press secretary to both, will most likely now work exclusively for the Prince. This division of staff is fraught with danger. If those two courts start to be rival to each other, start to be hostile to each other, uh, then I think that could be very damaging. The Prince of Wales has a long-established reputation as an ambassador for Britain. His supporters deny that's in jeopardy now. But foreign governments will have to choose whether to invite him or his more glamorous wife. And commentators suspect the Prince will lose out. That's the ITN World News from me. Goodbye.